Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll get started early. I mean, like people that come in the next few minutes, will they'll definitely have time to catch up. But if you want to get uh, ahead here, if you go to www.geogebra.org, um, I don't know if that worked as a URL. Let me just copy this. That's better. And I'll drop it in. There we go. Uh, if you want to go there in the upper right corner, uh, you'll see a, a button that says sign in. You'll want to make an account. Um, so I'm assuming, I'm assuming a lot of you have heard of GeoGebra, but it's like you just don't have the time to like, just so much to do. It's just you haven't made maybe perhaps made time to, to take a look at it more closely is my guess. Um, some of you may have a colleague that uses it and they're like, oh, it's so cool, but you're like, it's just another thing I got to learn, you know, it's, it's hard. Um, we're all stressed out. We have no time for anything, it seems. But we're, we'll take the hour to just take a, a very introductory uh, look at it and just to see how it can help us all teach and engage students in remote learning, whether you're fully remote, whether you're a hybrid where half the kids are in and half are home and then they flip flop, you know, or whether uh, I don't, I don't know of any high school or middle school that's totally normal yet. I know some elementaries are kind of, but, um, but who knows? So, but we'll, we'll have a lot of fun here uh, today. If you want to, uh, again, I won't, you know, I'm not going to require you to show cameras and stuff, but I just love to see participants if it's possible, but if you prefer not, that's totally cool. Um, again, the URL that I'll post here, I'll copy it and drop it in in case some of you missed is right here. And so, um, I'll screen share. I know I have another minute. I'll go ahead and get started here. But this is what GeoGebra looks like when you go to the main page. And if you are one who's like sort of tech anxious, it can be it can be a little bit uh, intimidating. I'll be honest. Uh, there's a lot here, okay. But this of this a lot that's here, we're going to look at some just minimal things that can really help us effectively engage our kids remotely. So you know, I know we all judge a book by its cover. We judge a website by the first thing we see, and it's understandable. I do the same thing, you know. But, um, but we're gonna work on that. Uh, but it's, um, we'll, uh, we'll make it work. So let's we'll put these here and see what comments came in. So, hey, hey, hello, Rob. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it's 11 o'clock, we'll get started. Welcome everybody to this uh, introduction to GeoGebra here at Virtual Amthus 2020. And um, uh, 2020, a year that's totally unprecedented. No one knew what was coming, but um, it's been a crazy year for all of us, of course. And it all seemed to start in March when we had, you know, how in the world are we going to teach remotely and what's it going to look like? And, you know, a lot of teachers would have the solution, oh, I could just make lectures and upload them to YouTube. But let's be honest, if I honestly wanted to make a video on solve, uh, teaching kids how to solve quadratics, right? It's like, I'll just go to YouTube and find something that's there. There's probably 8 million of them there already. And probably 7,000 of them are kind of lousy. 7 million are probably lousy. You know what I mean? So it's like, what? But teachers feel like they got to reinvent the wheel. But it's like, you don't. Okay? With a great apps like GeoGebra, another great app is Desmos. All right? I'm a big Desmos fan, too. I never speak negatively about them. Even though as a business perspective, they're, they are competitors. You know what? GeoGebra and Desmos complement each other so beautifully well. And uh, I know a lot of, I'm sure a lot of you here love Desmos and have used Desmos. And listen, when it comes to linear equations, Marble Slides is freaking amazing. I'll be honest. It, I love it. You know, I love card sorts, love everything like that, you know. Um, but GeoGebra, Desmos' strength, I find, lies in its activity builder and ease of use, you know, like that. Um, GeoGebra's power lies, I find, more within its apps. Um, we're going to work a lot in 3D today. Again, not to say, oh, you can't, again, it's not a competition, but it's really giving teachers the best of everything in order to help you make your lives less stressful, number one. Number two, more, most importantly, you know, or actually, no, your, your, your personal health comes first, but, but secondarily, to actually engage your students while minimizing the stress and workload that's put on you. Because you have enough, we have enough to do already, okay? So um, let's go, if we go to geogebra.org right here, and uh, right here, it kind of looks like this. Uh, in a way, notice in the upper corner, it says sign in. And by the way, when I screen share, you know, it, it kind of takes your screen hostage. When I work remotely with teachers and students, I always give a strong suggestion um, that even when you work virtually with kids, um, have the Google Meet or the Zoom call, have it take up about half of your screen, kind of like that. Because you know what, if you want to actively engage your students, you need to give them a play area on the right side of the screen or one side. So if you hit that button, that plus button right up there, right, you see this tab here, I can literally, 
just grab this tab, just yank it right out, and I could literally have a play area right here. So if you want to take just a minute to literally just like kind of squish your screen up, like when I when I hit full share, it kind of like took over your screen. Just hit the hit the escape button and then squish that screen to cover half half of your squish this zoom call to try to cover half of your screen. Put it solely in presenter mode, you know, so you have to see faces, but so you can see more of what I'm showing. So right now, this this side here is covering half my screen. It's covering a quarter of yours, obviously, because right. But basically, this is how I like to encourage as teachers and students to work. A teacher, the, you know, every the present the presentation, the class is here, but kids need their own play space to actively engage in the right. That is so crucial in this uh, in this realm of remote learning today. So crucial. Kids always have to have this play space because if we don't tell kids, if we don't tell our students to do that, they're never gonna, you know. Um, but anyhow, so I'm gonna not do that. I'm just gonna kind of keep it like this. So hopefully, my full screen is now half of your screen. And you drag, you took that new tab there and just drag it off to the right. So if you go to sign in, for those of you that don't have accounts, it's very simple. Okay, let's do this in like a way that doesn't take three minutes. Click sign in. If you have an account, just go ahead and you know do what you gotta do. But if you're totally new to the platform, I welcome you. Just go to where it says create account right here. Okay. And once you do so, the fastest way to create that account is to use a login from any one of these platforms right here. I'm assuming the most popular is Google. Uh, most schools use Google Classroom, have a Google e you know, a Gmail kind of thing. But you could log in from any one of those platforms here. If you choose to sign up through an email, it's gonna take a few minutes to get a confirmation and confirm. But the cool part of doing it this way up here is that you don't need a password to memorize. You know. So go ahead and take the time to create the account. The reason why is because you're gonna find stuff you like in this hour. And you might want to copy it, make your own version, but then you need an account to which it can save, if that makes sense, right? So take a minute go, to go ahead and do so now to create that GeoGebra account, please, and then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and rock and roll and get started. And at any time in this in this uh, session, please feel free to unmute your mics. Um, it's better to unmute your mics mics and ask me because I often don't see the number flashing up there for the chat, um, and I wish I did, but. Um, I want to have I want to have a conversation with you. We're talking even as teaching. Like I talk with my students. I don't talk to them. Same same in a kind of a conference platform like this. We're talking with each other. Okay, so go ahead and uh, take a second to create that account, and we will uh, we'll have a lot of fun in just a few minutes. We see what the how GeoGebra can help us with remote learning. And if you have questions, like I said, you can just unmute your mic and ask away. And even for people who show up late, that's totally okay. We can still do what we're doing here. Um, but uh, you know, as you're creating the account, I mean, I just just a quick bio. I uh, I did teach high school math for 15 years in Berlin, Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut. I live in Wallingford, about 20 minutes north of New Haven. Um, and uh, all throughout my teaching career, I've always loved to you know actively engage students. It's really to put the students at the center of their attention, put them at the driver's seat, right, and less of me. I want to be more on the side. All right. I tried to tell my students as little as possible, but I loved using technology like Geometer Sketchpad, Desmos, TI, everything that I could think of to try to actively engage students. And when I stumbled upon GeoDRA like five years ago, I just fell in love with it. And because um, it's, ama it's amazing at the power of their apps and what they can do. And uh, the platform is getting better, um, you know, every month. But I'm going to go ahead and screen share. And uh, we'll, uh, we're actually going to role play a little bit too here as we go through it. Um, if you are logged in, you should see a letter here where my mugshot is. You'll see like a, let, a letter in the upper corner. Okay. And um, people come here and sometimes it's like they get overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, what, what am I looking at here? There's so much stuff. And it's true. We're going to clean this up a little bit, make it more simpler over time. But think of it, let's think of it more simply. In GeoGebra, you really have two elements. You have apps and you have resources. Resources are like activities that are pre-made that now the GeoGebra online community, there's, there's uh, hundreds of millions that, uh, that are here, okay? And, and, and when you see, when it says classroom resources here, there are literally like, think of this as the YouTube of math activities, 
okay? But when you go to YouTube, you gotta be careful, right? It's like some videos you look up are great, but others are, a lot of them are kind of crappy. And the problem is you find the same thing here as well too. But at GeoGebra, we have taken a huge task in the last few years to make sure that, you know, stuff that we feel is much more higher quality appears first. Because anybody and their grandmother can make something in GeoGebra and upload it, make it public, right? And, you know, what, what is this, you know? But um, I just want to show you what, what GeoGebra say can do and just pulling up uh, some resources here. Now, um, you could search for classroom resources, uh, for example, just simply by going oops, here. Uh, if I go to where it says search up here, I can type in some key phrases like slope or linear equations and see, you know, see what, what comes up here. There's some activities here, you know, by whatever. Or I could look up statistics and see what resources exist like right over here. Like Steve Phelps, many of you know him on Twitter, Math Tech Coach. He's made a lot of cool simulations and some awesome questions on, on stats, all right? But um, I want to actually go, I want to actually take you through to an activity here that exists that you could find uh, on GeoGebra if you looked hard enough. But um, I'm going to show you an activity that I have here. It's called 2D to 3D, what can you create? And I'll give you this uh, link right here, just in case you want to bookmark it, bookmark it and say, look at it later. Oops, I got to go to everybody here. That's if you want to take that and put it in a new tab, look at it later, that's fine. But what I'm going to do, right, is I'm actually going to create what we call a class out of this. Let's talk about remote learning, right? Up in the upper right corner, if you're logged in, you'll see the create class button. Now, what does it mean to create a GeoGebra class? Tim, I'm confused. A GeoGebra class, better, in, in a much simpler description, is like a live lesson. Watch, we're going to role play now. You're going to be my geometry or algebra one or whatever students. I'm going to be the teacher. And we're going to actively, we're going to carry out the simulation in remote learning. You're hundreds of miles, you're a few hundred miles away from where I am, right, in New York, but we're going we're gonna to experiment here. I'm going to create a GeoGebra class, and I'm going to call this Amtis 2020 Demo and Create. So now, I have, now as a teacher, I need to invite you to join, okay? So in order to do that, I'm going to give you the link right here. There's two ways to join a GeoGebra class. You can, you can literally like uh, just basically ask kids to go here and type in this magic code and then they're in, right? But the quicker way, you, you, see, how, you see how the code is YHT7, whatever it is? If, if I look at that URL right here, GeoGebra Classroom, it's already pre-populated. That way there's no need to type in the code. So in your Google Meet with your class or your Zoom or whatever, just copy that link and then just drop it to your students just like I'm doing right here. Okay, so if you would please go there and uh, join the class, that would be awesome. If you are signed in the GeoGebra already, look at how fast you're coming in here, right? If you are logged in already, it should actually pre-fill the name as your username for GeoGebra. So you guys are coming in like fast, like flies on honey, right? So um, kind of like that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to role play student. Well, maybe not. I'll, you guys be students there. All right, I'm gonna have another one of you be a teacher and I'll be a student after. Are there any of you in the, are there any of you here that team teach with a, uh, a co-teacher by chance? If you wanna ra raise your hand. Any of you team teach at all? Uh, with a special ed teacher? Co-teachers at all? Some of you, may, is there not? If that's the case, I will show you this. Um, if you have a co-teacher, see this is a teacher view of the, of, the class, of the lesson. You have the student view, but at any time, if you click the share button up here, right? And you click the share button up there, you can actually, uh, I can actually add a code teacher by entering their email address or the username. Okay, that's another powerful feature. So two teachers together can work simultaneously with students. Maybe you have two breakout rooms in a Zoom or Google, whatever. Okay, so let's close out of that. Now there's 24 people in the class and how there's 31 people in the Zoom call. Um, let's see. All right, Colleen, perfect. So uh, right here, if you uh, need the link to the class again, because you joined late, that's okay. I'll, plop, I'll drop it in one more time. Go ahead. Now, here's the thing. If you are not logged into GeoGebra, like you don't have an account, you could still do this, but your work will not save because you have no account to save it to. If you want your students' work to save, your students need GeoGebra accounts. And if you, if you have a district whose administration is very kind of high strung and like all about data privacy and this and that, you email me and I will get it to the office staff and they GeoGebra deals with this privacy stuff all the time. They don't do anything with information, totally safe, totally fine. 
okay? So let's check it out. Now in the tasks overview here, right? This is what I see as a teacher, okay? Um, would you actually just type hello or just type in a few words uh, in this response here? How are you feeling today? What's going on? Could you, just where it says task one, you see the empty, uh, what you see as a student is this, right? You see task one here. So if you could just type in some gibberish there, I just want to show you what happens. Okay. I could see responses coming in real time. See, it's populating pretty quickly. All right. Kind of reminds me of the Desmo starter screens. I mean, the starter screens are there way more fun than something like this, of course. But the thing is, it's like here, you know, it's, it's trying to, you know, connect with students here. By the way, I have a pause button here. You know, obviously you're frozen now, right? I can use this to help with pacing. By the way, we're going to have some advanced pacing coming in a month or two to this, where you can restrict the slide to activities, whatever, whatever. Those of you Desmos users are very similar, that you know what I mean? But let's uh, resume here. And at the same time, the way Desmos has anonymized, where they give every kid a mathematician name, right? If you click hide names, right, you'll actually see student one, because many times student, teachers will want to show students uh, work in the class and not if there's a couple like, you know, inaccurate uh, mis uh, perceptions and they want to have the class critique each perception of, of the response to whatever, then maybe, you know, the student won't feel so embarrassed. Gulp, you know, it's kind of like it maintains their, it just keeps it confidential, which again, I think is an awesome feature. All right. But let's go have some more fun in task two. Yeah, let's play. In task two, which is right below, I want you to mess around there in the, in the 3D view. You can move the points around, but I want you to make something that looks really cool. Go ahead, just play. Let's see what you can come up with. And notice here, I'm seeing changes every like two or three seconds. I'm seeing changes in real time here. This is the power of GeoGebra Classroom. I'm, you are hundreds of miles away, but yet I'm able, to, I'm able to draw you and actively engage you. And again, who's the center of attention here? I mean, I feel like I am because I'm talking, but it's really your work here. You're in the driver's seat here. You're playing around. You're messing with it. Okay. I've had people tell me, oh, that looks like the, that looks like the, the bowl, my grandma, the fancy bowl my grandma has and yells at me not to run there and don't touch. You know what I mean? The pottery. But um, again, it's pretty, it's pretty cool what you can, what you can do here especially in 3D. GeoGebra 3D is pretty simple. It's pretty awesome and it's powerful. All right. Um, like I said, when it, comes to linear, when it comes to linear equations or, you know, working with some, some things, yeah, yeah, I choose Desmos Marble Slides, fine. But when it comes to working in 3D and creating surfaces of revolution, I like to play in GeoGebra. You know, again, each of the tools, as I said before, they complement each other. Both are great platforms, so I always encourage faculty to use the best of both. All right. Um, there's a lot here for you which is pretty cool. Here it is. Nice. Look at that right here. And I could take a look at, by the way, I could take a look at any one student's work in particular. Like, see, I'm going to pick on Candace here. All right. I won't call on you, Candace, but see right here. If I look at that thumbnail, I can click on it and see it up close. Now this won't change up close because up in the right corner, it says it's only a preview. So if Candace moves this after the, after I look at it, it's going to, it's, it's, it's not going to reflect here at least yet. But I could see here, I see a little, maybe a little symmetry about a plane or whatever, but I can actually have a conversation with Candace and, and, a, and maybe a, a Zoom breakout room or something like that. And we could talk about something if we need to, right? If I refresh Candace's work here, then I could see an updated view. She might've touched it since then. You see what I'm saying? Um, but anything is, is, yeah, she moved a little bit. Anything is possible here. All right. So now look at task three now. I want you to look the direction, say, I want you to create a very simple surface. By the way, I think task three is in the next, uh, the next icon uh, in that activity you're in. It should look blue. Would you all jump to task three, please? And create something that looks really, I mean, really simple. Now that looks like a Hershey kiss to me almost. So, I mean, Hershey kisses are kind of curved. They're kind of complicated there, but I don't know. You see, now as a student, I'm not telling you, like your role playing student, I'm not telling you what I mean by simple geometric uh, surface, but I, I want you to create a surface of revolution that you, that you think is what you would call simple. Go ahead. Love what I'm seeing. This is so awesome. It's like watching TV here. 
See, you're in the driver's seat. I'm on the sidelines just cheering you on. It's fun. Let's see. Feel free to unmute your mics. I don't want to be the only one talking, but what do you think of when you hear the word simple? Like a simple geometric surface that you could form by spinning that black cross section about that dashed line, because you know that's what's going on. What do you think? It's a pretty basic surface without some indentations and things like that. Yeah, so what kind, what kind of surface are we talking about, you think? Convex. Ah, uh, that's, if I, if, again, if think of, think of, pretend I'm a fourth grader. Can you make a surface that a fourth grader would know the name of? How about that? Even a third or second grader. Actually, I think, and now I think of it, my first graders in kindergarten, first grade in kindergarten, I have, like, I have, a, I have a son in second grade in kindergarten. They, in my kindergartner knows the name of a surface I'm thinking about here that you can form. Actually, two, of, two possibilities I'm thinking. A cylinder would be one. I agree. Can we all try to make a cylinder here? How would we do it, you think? There's your challenge for task three. I want to see if everybody in, involved here, can, can you make a cylinder? Oops. Hmm. And for those of you that may have come in a little bit late, if you want the link to this classroom to play to to play around to, go right ahead. I'm sorry I didn't see the chat comments here. You know, uh, Andy, I totally agree. I wish I had this uh, when I was in high school and in college back in the mid to late '90s. Absolutely. Uh, for those of you that were late, that URL I put there in case you want to join. It's totally cool. But yeah, uh, let's go back to the tasks here. Task three is where we're at. How can we make a cylinder here? Now see a question like this is something that students can't readily ask Siri, right? That's all, let me try it. Hey Siri, how do I make a cylinder in 3D? Let's see what she says. Okay, I found this on the web for how do I make a cylinder in 3D. Check it out. Okay, but see, I got some digging and research to do, right? So the thing there, she gave me like three URLs, but the point is, it's like it's not it's, it's not a lower level thinking question where I can ask, uh, you know, uh, uh, hey Siri, um, how do I find the volume of a cylinder? Here's what I found from MathOpenRef.com. Okay. Like prisms, the volume is found by multiplying the area of one end of the cylinder based by its height. All right, but think of all the questions that we ask our students, right? They're, a lot of the questions that teachers often ask are those ones that are just kind of like plug and shove. Ah, Erdish got it right there. This is looking good right there. Um, let's see, ah, Christy, nice. But if we talk about it for a second, like there, what actually makes, let me see if I can try it myself here, what's gotta happen? In order to make a cylinder, what's gotta happen here? That curve's gotta be a line. It's got to be, it's totally got to be straight, right? But let me try making it straight like this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do exactly what you said. That's straight, isn't it? But why is it, uh, that's no cylinder. In fact, what does that look like to you? A cone. That looks like a frustrate, like a part of a cone, right? So, but how do I, how do I make sure that that black segment, when I spin it, makes a surface of revolution that's a cylinder? What's got to happen? It has to be parallel to the axes. Very good. Or parallel to that dashed line, right? Right there. Let me actually make it, because it's kind of getting in the way. So all of these have to be parallel. So if we, if we make this parallel right here, right? But you see, Look at the kind of questions we could ask our students while they're at home. That's what I'm trying to make. This interface, I mean, Geodra, I'm not here to twist your arm to try to get you to use Geodra. I'm not trying to sell anything, right? I'm just trying to show off an app that actually it actively engages students and that you could use practically at any time. 
or those of you that are in the hybrid model, you can have your students who are in the classroom doing the same thing that the students at home are. And you could see all student responses in real time. You see what I'm saying? But yeah. So what about a uh, and so what about a cone? So now I can start I can start asking students to uh, do a lot more deeper, say, critical thinking, where they actually have to you know then make a cone. But then I ask, what's the difference between the two? Like, um, how do I know? Is it over? Maybe go in part three here. The student view. Um, right here, task eight and task nine. See, if you go to part three, which is task seven, like let's pretend we made a cylinder in a cone, right? But let's just do one of them. Can we make a cylinder? Now here's, let's go to task eight for a second or task nine. Let's, yeah, let's play with the yellow, right? Is it possible to make a cylinder where the dashed line is actually not along a grid line? You see what I mean? Like, because it's like, I make it, like you said, I just got to make it you said, somebody in the room said, you gotta make this parallel to the axis of revolution, right? But this is not gonna make a cylinder, as you could tell. It's straight, and when it's straight, it's at least a cone, right? Or part of a cone. But what, what's gonna guarantee me, how am I gonna make sure that that black segment is parallel to that dashed line? Same slope. Ooh, slope. Now we're talking algebra one, aren't we? If now I don't have any axes here, so again, upside down is all relative, you know. But if if an algebra one teachers, you know, if we if we were positioning it this way, what would you expect your students to tell you the slope of this line is right here? If you held it this way, negative two thirds. Exactly. Oh, so down two over three. Oh, let's try it. Down two. If you want to try me? Down two over three. Let's go down two over one, two, three. See, students are making some deeper conceptual connections here, but the powers they are creating. See, teachers aren't the ones talking and delivering. Your job is not to stand and deliver, like that Escalante movie. You know what I mean? But like, but here, your job is to literally put them at the driver's seat because it's with tech now we can, and see here. But now you ask your students to build this. With respect to assessment teachers, can we, would you say if students can actually can complete this challenge, you know, working together or on their own, would you be comfortable saying that they've demonstrated mastery of quite a few objectives that are in uh, al some algebra and geometry curricula? I would think, right? And could this per potentially count as like a 10 point quiz? I mean, see, it's almost like we had to grieve the loss back in March when COVID hit and we were all home and how do I make sure my kids don't cheat? Well, you can't. Summative assessment, I think it was uh, Sunil, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sunil Singh, you know, the math research, he actually said on Twitter once, or it's Facebook, I forgot where, but he, he actually said like, you know, formative, or I think it was him or Dr. Brownwell, but one of those two said that summative, putting stock in summative assessment like right now in this era is kind of like putting stock, buying stock in Blockbuster video. It's like useless, right? But formative is where you really have to live to see to the collaboration of students, you know, just to show what they know. You know this is formative assessment, 100%. There's no self-automated, there's no self-checking like Khan Academy, you know, but it's basically you as a teacher are watching what the students are doing literally in real time. And you can actually see, let me just go back a notch. I could see what's going on uh, right over here. You see what I'm saying? I see a few of you have done it there, which is awesome, right? And by the way, if you're ever up, if you're ever at a PPT virtual and you know, like, well, show me where Jack has mastered or, or there's a referral process, that part's a pain in the butt where you gotta fill out all that stupid paperwork. You know what? Here you, you have digital evidence of what a student has been able to accomplish, if you will. And you know what, you can actually take screenshots, show it, but again, the work saves as long as a student has the GeoDev account, if that makes sense, okay? So um, that's kind of a, a little snapshot of GeoGebra class and what it can do. The 31 of you that are in this class, right? If you decide to uh, leave the class, by the way, why don't you go back? Why don't you exit out of that, exit out of that tab you're in, okay? And um, I'm actually going to be a student. I'll um, I'll join that class as well. See, so, yeah, and I'll, uh, even though I haven't started yet, see, I'm a student in the class just like you, all right? Now, the thing is, I joined the class. Let's suppose I did some work like you just did. Oop, sorry, you know, my mom's calling me. I got to go, right, bye. And so that's all the work that the student does. 
It says saving, it says all changes saved, which is beautiful. All student work saves here, it's nice. So now if you go back and go, if you close out that tab, and just go to a new one, go back to GeoGebra. Let me ask you all a Google question. When someone shares with you uh, something on Google and you look at it and then you close your computer or Chromebook up and you go back, where do you go to find that document if you lost it? Where, does it, oh, where is it always gonna be found? Your history. Oh, that's true, your history. Or if you don't even think to go to your history, uh, Andy in the chat said in Google Drive, right? So in GeoGebra, I'm gonna show you where your drive is, okay, your Google Drive. It's actually your profile. Okay, hopefully you're still playing on the right. You have the homepage, newsfeed, resources. If you go to profile right there, as a student, you see how all of you should have that icon there. It says Amptus 2020 demo. If you, if you click on it, go back in any one of those parts, you see how I left that curvy vase like this? If I complete it all the way, let's say I just close it, right? It says saving up here, changes saved, and oh, I decide to close out again, right? And go back to uh, just geogebra.org. It's tomorrow, I'm gonna keep working on this task. Go back to your profile. Your work is here, part one. And you will find your work just the way you left it when you closed your Chromebook down, okay? Uh, I see a comment in the chat here. Let's see. What is it? Uh, yeah, Christy, Jane, it's awesome. Totally awesome. So all student work saves. And by the way, um, well, well, we'll show a co-teacher demo in a second. But that's how you can use uh, GeoGebra. I'm going to go back to just the main page here if you want to go here with me. That's a quick demo of GeoGebra Classroom. All right. So and notice you'll see a classroom icon right here. But you don't have to click it because that's how you could join the class if you just type in the code right there. But the way I shared it with you, there was no code to type in because I pre-filled it already. That's kind of like the long way, right? You know, in Desmos, you make an activity, you make a session and it's like, oh, go to student.desmos and you type in the code, but you could also give them a shareable link. That's kind of what I did, all right? So now, um, middle school teachers in the room, I want to point out a few things here, all right? So we, we, sh we saw how G in the first half hour, we just explored GeoGebra Classroom, how it can foster active student-centered engagement where they're synthesizing their building whether at home or in class or in a hybrid, all right? Um, now, I wanna point out the main swim lane right here. I don't know if any of you teachers teach out of the IM six to eight curriculum, but we at GeoGebra have recently finished this uh, product here where we took illustrative mathematics and opened up resources, middle school curriculum, like it was a top notch curriculum um, that got a, a lot of uh, great reviews, okay? And um, the ed reports or whatever, but basically you go here, what you will find is all of the IM lessons. Let's go to, I'm gonna to go to grade six, for example. And grade six, you IM teachers, you know exactly, you've seen these before, you know exactly. Let's go to unit one. And I'm gonna pick a lesson out of here, and just a demo with you here. 6.1.17. Now, for those of you that know this, uh, for those of you that actually play with this curriculum, you have, you have a lesson and a practice component with each of those lessons. But if you click on a bolded title, you'll get both. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on lesson since there's less here, right? This is called squares and cubes, right? But you know what? I might have, I might have, a, I might have a class of students where it's like, you know what, Tim? The people tell teachers like, this is too much. If I give them this activity in a GeoGebra class, they're just gonna either shut down or their anxiety is gonna just make them flip and go through the roof. How do I take an activity, copy it, and just make it my own. I just want to edit it just slightly. And now I ask you the Google analogy. Teachers, in Google, you have a Google Doc that administration shares with you. You're supposed to do something with it, but they didn't give you, they didn't give you the ability to edit it. What do you do with any Google Doc, sheet or slides, that you can't edit, but you want to have your own version and you need it right now? What do you do? Make a copy. File, make a copy. Well, you do the same thing in GeoGebra. You see, because right here, um, where is it? Yeah. Right here, right? You can't, you can't edit this because you are not, you are not in the account GeoGebra Classroom Activities. They're the ones that made this from the original IM68 math account. Like this was the parent, this is the child, the kind of is. So what you do is in your account, if you go to the upper right corner here, I don't wanna make a live lesson out of this yet because I need to change it first. So what you do is go here and you go to copy activity right there. 
three dots, copy activity. And now we can make this activity our own. Again, I've done the same thing in Desmos where you see a teacher thing, but oh my gosh, I love these screens, but I want to change the wording here. You go to, you just go to copy and edit. You just go to copy. It's again, it's the same logic here. Okay. So uh, I'm going to call this uh, maybe a warm up 11, today's the seventh, I think, right? And you know what? Too much. By the way, you see this little delete icon right here? I can delete these elements right here. So I'm going to delete it. Uh, delete it. Now, I, I like this one. Use the 32 snap cubes in this hidden stack to build the largest single cube you can. I'm going to make a class out of this and watch you build with cubes here in just a second. I'll have one of you be the teacher. All right. So um, I'm going to keep that. How many cubes did you use? What is the side length of the cube you built? So in everything else, I'm just going to delete. I just want to make a small activity right here. Too much, too much crap. Just get rid of it, right? Again, it's a great curriculum. I'm not knocking it, but as a teacher, and I only have like maybe a half hour session with my students, maybe, I just want to get rid of elements that are unnecessary to me, and I want to just make it simple. You can do that. And that took, what, less than a minute? All right, but you can also add your own stuff, too. See where it says add? What can we add? Now, granted, I'll, be, I'll admit, Desmos has a speed here. Like, I mean, I, actually, I can embed a card sort. I have embedded Desmos in GeoGebra. You know, I don't think a lot of people do that, but um, by going to external URL, like I put a web there and I can actually, bet, I can buy anything, pretty much a Google form, Google slides, you can put anything in there. But I wanna actually add a question. All right, um, but we've already seen open questions, but I'm gonna make a multiple choice question, which has absolutely nothing to do with the lesson here, but I just wanna illustrate for, for, for the purpose of illustration here. Which of the following numbers are even? Again, I know it seems silly to ask, but let's see, two, three, four, five. Okay, so, and I can actually choose what the correct answers are. I love those questions of the form, check all that apply, because there's two to the end possibilities. I don't really like one answer. But um, again, I don't really give much of these anyway. I like, uh, I like to hear natural responses from students. So if I go to done, right? Uh, here we go. So th there's uh, what we have here. This is what my activity looks like. I changed the title. I only kept this in. And I just, um, I just kept it simple. And I could add some more complicated questions later. So I'll save it and close it. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't bring you to your saved copy, which I wish it did. This is just a workflow that they're going to fix in the next couple of weeks. But again, unmute your mics again. Where do you go if you want to see your personal stash of stuff? Where's the part in GeoGebra you have to go to again? Profile. Profile. Where, and how do I get there? Can you walk me to it? Hamburger menu. Yep. Hamburger menu. Uh, thank you. Profile. Very good. You can also just right. click on your, the letter at the top right corner, correct? Uh, was that there? Which letter? Oh, uh, so when you're in GeoGebra, if you uh -huh. click on the, when you're signed in. Yep. Um, on your, where your face was, but where our letters are, we can click on that, it takes us to our account as well. Yes, okay, I just, no, you're, you're absolutely correct. I just don't see it here though, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't, um, see, it on your, I don't see it on your screen either. Yeah, yeah, but no, but you're, you're absolutely right. That's totally correct though. And any other, they, they should have a letter here. I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put a ticket in for that. But if you click on GeoGebra, that takes you back home, profile, right? You got it there, which is cool. So now look at my warm up here. There it is. But can I actually ask, can I have one of you role play teacher and share your screen? I'll be a student this time. All right, who wants to, who wants to volunteer? I'm gonna stop sharing. All right, um, anybody want to screen share? And I'll join, the, I'll join the sixth grade IM class. Working on surface area. Come on. Don't worry, pre-calc -calc teachers, we'll hit you next, okay? Promise. Anybody want to screen share? Take charge? I can do it. I don't Christy, care. go for it. Christy, all right. So um, here's the link. Only Christy, I know it says everyone there. But would you take that? Would you share your screen, please? Awesome. And again, when she shared her screen, could you actually hit escape? Uh, and kind of try to make that zoom window squished off a little bit to the um, hide the chat. You know what I mean? Just you want to you want to have much clarity on the right as you possibly can. All right, very important. Now um, go ahead and hit create class. 
And you can call it that, it's fine, create. And now, um, would you go to that share icon up in the upper right corner, please? And copy the link and drop it in the Zoom chat. Thank you. And to get to the chat, do I need to, while this is, while I'm sharing my screen, how do you get to the chat easily? Move your mouse a little up to the upper top part there. Just move your mouse up to the tippity top and you should see the, the, the menu bar pop up for the Zoom okay. call. Oh, yep, I see it now. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So that last link that's there, um, go ahead and let's, uh, let's role play and become a student in the class. All right. So now, um, got eight students in the class, 10, coming in, they're coming in fast. It's, uh, they upload, they upgrade their server speed like crazy. I actually did a webinar uh, Monday night with teachers, with like 400 teachers in Indonesia. We were doing this very thing in 3D. I mean, it was 9.30 at night here, 9.30 in the morning over there. And like, even with 300 people in the class, it was like, it was so wicked fast. It was unbelievable. Um, yeah, so, um, so now if you go to tasks overview, you can actually see the people have started. So those of you who are uh, doing this, if you actually, you can start dragging cubes out of that stack right there. And um, actually, could you stop screen sharing for one second? I just need to show everybody yep. something here. Easier to show and I'll show again. I'll, I'll let you screen share right back. All right, thank you. So by the way, if you want to, um, if, if you actually want to actually see right here, if you actually take these dots, if you click on it with the mouse, click it, you see how you get the north, south, east, west, and then you have up and down. In the up down position, you could actually move it up off the plane. So by going here, I could take that and then move this up like so and try to start building the biggest, there's 32 cubes that are kind of nestled in that single one there. They're just stacked on top, they're stacked within each other. So they coincide. But this, this IM question asks kids to build the largest possible single cube they can out of the 32. Right, which is pretty cool. So I'll stop sharing. Go ahead and screen share again. But it's fun. And again, kids are building, kids are, the students are the ones creating, not you, the teacher, kind of talking through. I mean, there's no way on earth you can take Unifix cubes and drive them all their houses, give them at home, and oh, even in class, you got to sanitize. It's just with COVID craziness. You know what? But it's, you know what? At least right here, you have something that everybody could touch, everybody can interact with, and mess around with, and start building. And now talk about formative assessment from the teacher's perspective in real time. It's powerful, All right? And if we, if time allowed for it, we could do it, you know, what's the largest cube I can build, you know, from 32, you know, I'm thinking, well, three by three is nine by three is 27. I'm seeing 27. Oh gosh, there's five left over, you know, this four by four by four is what, 64. So it's kind of like, so kids are kind of like, they're, they're just, again, this is sixth grade, but the students are totally capable of doing something like this. And you as a teacher don't need super 3D tech expertise to do this because it's been made already. You just need to use the, again, the only really hard part, not as hard, it's just creating a GeoGebra class out of it and having the kids join. And now, we, now we're spending more time talking with our students as they embrace that productive struggle, right? Um, and you are just talking with them, not to them, which is beautiful. Because you direct lecture, it's going to go right over the head, you're going to lose them, right? But to maximize student-centered engagement, that's, that's the key. That's why I love GeoGebra Classroom. That's why I love Business Activity Builder and anything and everything that will actively engage students like that. Okay. Um, now, can you go to task four, please? Um, yeah. I just want to show you how this uh, multiple choice question works here. On an iPad, Dolores, let's see what we got. Um, uh, yes, uh, Candice, if you click on the, if you drag a cube out of the main one, out of the main uh, back left one, drag it out, click, use your mouse to click on the red dot. You'll see it go up, down. And after it goes up, down, drag it up or down. You just got to click, click on the red dot to move it up, down. And then if you click on that dot again, it'll keep it at the same height, if you will. Yep, awesome. Um, yeah, uh, Dolores says it's difficult on my iPad to move the cubes. Try hitting the, um, the, the square in the lower corner, Dolores, that white square there that'll make it take over the screen. That'll give you more play area, uh, if you will. It's kind of, uh, you know, uh, sometimes an iPad, yeah. 
give that a shot, see if that helps. All right, now, uh, can you go to show correct uh, answers? Let's see, the uh, who's the share? Christy, yeah. Actually, that, you could see which students have answered which ones. And would you all humor me for a second? I'm gonna join in with you. Would you just start clicking A, B, C, D like nonstop? Just to, just to really kind of give uh, Christy a headache. Sorry, Christy. But uh, let's see here. Yeah. Look how fast that data changes. Pretty cool, right? Not just to say showing the, the speed, but again, at any time you can, you can see what's going on here. Almost like reminds me of, there's not safety in numbers, but it kind of reminds me of the who wants to be a millionaire, like ask the audience kind of thing, you know, um, if you will. But that's, one of, that's a feature of the check all that apply questions right there. Um, yeah. So now I have been asked on social media a lot by teachers all over, and I'm gonna, it might, some of you might be even in the session right now, where um, teachers are like, well, Tim, you call it a GeoGebra class, but I always thought a class was the students, the, 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 body, the, human, the humans make up the class. It's not the tasks on the left. Why does GeoGebra like put the tasks, they call it the task first, and it's like, that's a great question. To be honest with you, I've had the same question all along ever since it came out. The better way to think of it is, is as a live lesson. This is a live lesson literally going on. We're live and you, teachers are formally assessing and the students and students are formally, formally assessing their own work as they talk with each other and with their teacher. So, um, but if you go back to tasks overview on the far left, uh, I'm sorry, the go up to the warm up, go to the class name called warm up there. Yeah, um, I'll give you, I'll kind of let you in on a little sneak peek here. This, this feature is gonna get released either next week or the week after or within this month, I'll tell you that but uh, I can definitely share this, but it's gonna be possible to actually, instead of those names appearing right there, you're gonna see thumbnails appear, like of student names. And if, once you click on the thumbnail, you'll see all the tasks through, uh, on, uh, that they've actually started and are making progress. Because teachers like, I wanna click on one student name and see all the tasks they've done. Because right now I just gotta go to task one and see if I can find their name, task two, see if I can find their name, because it's freaking annoying and it takes a long time. And I agree with you, that is a pain in the butt but that's gonna change as of next week or the week after. So keep in tune, GeoGebra will definitely, you know, release on social media when it's, when it's out. Um, also what's coming uh, in the next week or two is that when you start a class, um, it'll come automatically paused. So it kind of helps like kids like, oh wait, 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 don't stop there yet, wait, 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 come back. You know, or, you know like whatever, it's kind of like you want everyone to start at the same time, that'll be a feature that you can have as well, all right? Um, but yeah, but there's a lot more exciting things coming to GeoGebra in the next couple of months that I'm not at liberty to say, uh, but it's going to be, it's going to be game changer. It's going to be awesome. So yeah, are there any, now I have some more stuff to show, um, in terms of other resources you can copy and edit and things, but, um, any questions at this point, uh, we're, I know we have 15 minutes to, to left here, but anything else you want to, um, so, sorry, I have one, um, you're it. talking okay. about this being really used in the live class. Can mm -hmm. it be used in that asynchronous model as well? Sure, as long as you give students the GeoGebra classroom link. And like, for example, like the workflow that I just showed you here, it also works on Google Classroom. You could take any GeoGebra activity and you can assign it as an assignment in Google Classroom. And I'm happy to demo that if I have within like the last three or four minutes for those of you that, but I also have a quick three minute video I can just share with you. Those who are interested can go to it instead of wasting everybody's time. But um, but that's totally possible. But for the asynchronous model or synchronous, it could, it could be used either way. The only difference is that kids are working on their own time. So if a student happens to be working at nine o'clock at night on building those surfaces of revolution that we just discussed, right? You, if, you, if you happen to log into that class, just to see, you might see a thumbnail or two out of 30 moving. Oh, they're, they're actually doing it, you know? Um, but that's kind of, um, that's kind of uh, the thing there. Uh, yes, I will put the link to the video uh, in there very soon. In fact, um, I'm going to give you a Google Slides presentation that will have the video uh, embedded in it in, uh, towards the end, okay? But one last thing I want to actually uh, uh, go in there. Um, so, Peggy. So basically is, uh, let me just give me one second, go back to GeoGebra. Too many tabs open. All right. So again, middle school teachers, you got the IM curriculum here that you could supplement. Again, our goal here was never to one up IM and say like, oh, look what we did, we're better. No, no, that's not the goal. Again, we are not a licensed partner. We're not a Kendall Hunt, Learn Zillion, or McGraw-Hill. We're not any of those people. They are the licensed partners and distributors of their curriculum. All we have done is we have basically, we have not made the curriculum better. We have just simply made it 100% digitally accessible, if that makes sense. 
okay, with respect to that. Am I screen sharing? I'm not, no, All right. Again, we haven't made the curriculum say better, but what we have done is made it digitally accessible. So questions that say, hey, students, take a piece of graph paper and draw three rectangles, draw three, construct three rectangles that have an area of 12. Well, they can now use the GeoGebra app and better in that activity to build it. And then in GeoGebra Classroom, you could see the students building that, building those three rectangles in real time. Okay. Um, now these are, I'm going to, I'm going to go here last, but elementary school teachers and middle school and high school teachers, there's a lot of rich resources here, all the way from AP Calculus, all the way down to, you know, sorting shapes in kindergarten. Okay. So you go here. Okay. The, and you'll find a lot of things that you can go to. Time does not allow for me to do that here. But the last thing I do want to show you is how you can create your own, say, anticipatory sets or warm-ups or, or cool-downs or whatever, right? You just need a template of something like algebra tiles or maybe dice or something like that. So I'm going to go here to where it says remote learning templates. All right. And I have some whiteboards here, right? And I have, I have some manipulatives like telling time, analog clock, or whatever. So like, for example, in the clock example, again, nothing fancy about it. They're just, they're just analog clocks. But now I can actually, let's go by the minute, I can actually copy this activity and make a, make a, a, a warm up here. Let's say the first question, I copy the activity, I delete the last two clocks and I put directions here. Hey, Jack came home at half past three, express this time below. And then you could see if students are being able to do that, you know? Um, Again, simple, simple questions or with algebra tiles, same thing. But I just want to actually uh, show you the GeoGebra apps themselves. Remember at the beginning of the session, I said GeoGebra consists of primarily apps and resources. Their apps are so high powered. Like we were playing in the 3D calculator before in the other activity we were in. But I'm just going to click on Calculator Suite. That's their most powerful app um, there. This is going to become the successor to GeoGebra Classic for those of you familiar with that. There's nothing fancy or elegant here. It's just four apps embedded in one activity. So what I'm gonna do for my say pre-calc or calculus class here is the following. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna copy this activity and I'm gonna make my own custom thing. See, cause I don't have the time. I mean, sure I could go to the app itself and whatever, but I wanna put some directions in here. So let me just wipe out everything, right? And by the way, this little pencil here, I can edit, okay? And I might just put a, a heading here and say, and, all right, students, say, hey, construct the graph of an even function that satisfies f of negative 3 equals 2 and f of, um, f of 4 equals 0. See? Something like that. And we can, go, we can go at it like that way. Okay? So now... Um, I'll say warm up two, and there it is. So I'm going to save that and close it, right? And now I can go ahead and create a GeoGebra. Okay, I got to go back to my profile. It'll be there, right? This activity is right here. I can make a class out of it. That's your warm up. So let me go ahead and just do that. I'm going to show you what you can do. Um, you can actually edit the class while the class is in session. All right, you don't have to make a new, you don't, you don't have to make a new live lesson for it. So um, if you want to join, go right ahead. Uh, let me give you the code. Last class, I'll ask you to join. Uh, yes, uh, at high, uh, high school, absolutely. Um, uh, to see Avalos, just go to, on the main page. Go to on the last icon on the far right in the first swim lane, you'll see it. All right, but there you go. All right, so construct the graph of an even function is what it said, right? That satisfies F negative three. Now, again, now this is how I would have students say do it. You don't have to actually come up with an equation. I mean, sure, could I plot, could I go ahead and plot the points? Uh, what was it, negative three, negative three, two? And uh, four, zero. Right now, I know that because the function's even, right? It has to be symmetric about the y-axis. F of negative x has to be f of x. So I think three two's got to be on that thing, right? And also uh, negative four zero, right? But you know what? At this point now, students want to go ahead and draw that. Now this is where this is where it comes in learning the the tools of GeoGebra, 
And again, it is a, it is a little bit of a learning curve, but they're very easy to use. I can go, if I scroll down to where it says pen, this, you, you can doodle literally right on the app. So my students could do something like this. I could do something fancy like a McDonald's kind of a thing, you know, just to get a try to look even, if you will, or like that. You know what I mean? Not perfectly perfect, but it, it does the trick. Another thing I could also try doing is watch this. I can actually take this. Oh, this is gonna be fun, All right? Let's make that. Now, people say, can I just reflect? Oh, look at this. Couldn't we reflect it about the y-axis there to truly make sure it's like perfect, right? If I reflect, I can click on this and just touch the y-axis and there you go, all right? Now see here, we just learned how to use two new tools in the app. See, that's what I meant when I said GeoGebra, there's, there's high powered apps and there's, there's activities or resources. Here is an example of an app within a, a resource or which I changed it to, which I create a live lesson from, all right? But now all of you are, are in there. You can make, just go ahead and just go to the pencil, start doodling and saying hello or do whatever you want, right? I, I see you students are at work there, but then I'm thinking, oh crap, wait a minute. I should, I should be able to ask you the odd question at the same time, shouldn't I? But you guys are already working. I could, what, what, what should I do? Should I just, I have to edit the, I can't edit the class, but what I can do is edit the activity from which the class came. And that's the key. So right now, if you ever find yourself in a, in a spot where it's like, oh shoot, I wanna add or take away something, you can do that, you know, while the, and you don't have to change and make a new class. To do that, it's not obvious, but you can. To do that, you have to go to view original. And this only works if you are the owner. You see, it, I actually copied the, that's why I say, if you find something you like, just copy it anyway. That way you have ownership of it. It's yours and nobody else's, right? Even on Desmos, when I find stuff that like the Desmos team creates or that someone else who's a high powered Desmos user creates, I make my own copy anyway, copy of, and that way they may change it. But if I, I might like it the way it is, you, you never know. It's okay to make your own copies of things. But right here, see, I'm back, I'm, I'm back where I was. So now, I'm gonna to go to edit activity because I own the activity. I created the copy from some other account. It's mine now, I'm gonna edit it and watch how easy this is. I'm just, all I'm gonna do is repeat this question and I love this magic icon there. See, that's the copy button right there. Make a, it's an old editor, it's clunky. They're gonna change it in the next year. But right here, let's just change even to odd. And, um, I think I could do that, right? Yeah. And so now I hit done and then I hit save and close. And if you ever so choose to do this while the class is in session, you just have to tell your students to refresh your screen. So would everybody in the class please refresh your screen right now? Go right ahead. If you refresh your classroom screen, do you see a brand new task down there? You have the odd question now. So you can edit a class or a live lesson while the kids are working on it which is awesome. Jane gives a thumbs up, I love it. All right, so um, how do you connect your points? Uh, there's a couple ways, Diana, that's, uh, that's for another session, but what you could do, Diana, is just hit more where the tools are, go to the circle triangle, hit more, and then um, go to the pen, find the pen tool, and you could just start doodling on there to just kind of draw, you could draw that graph there, okay? Uh, very powerful, Candace, I totally agree. So right here, we're gonna, I'll end it with this to give you some stuff to play with. Uh, let me see right here. Let me just go to it. Find it first. Got it before. All right. I'll drop you this, uh, I'll drop you the link to this right here. There's nothing really, I still have to add some more. To, I have to change these video links, but Here's, I'm gonna share this now so you can have it and uh, I'll show you, copy the link and I'll paste it to you guys right there. Oh. Um, Christy, I would say GeoGebra's YouTube page. They're categorized by playlists. So wherever you wanna go, best place to learn more about GeoGebra is their YouTube page. You have, you have ideas for teaching remotely, just learning how to use like some of the features, how to's. And then there's some webinars on how to use, like we, we take deep dives into the, the graphing calculator or the 3D calculator or the whatever, okay? Um, you're welcome. And so right here, if you wanna take a picture of that, uh, if you wanna take a picture of that, uh, that uh, URL, uh, of that QR code there, 
that'll take it that'll take it to some social media sites I use to share ideas for teaching learning on a you know a few times a week uh, right there feel free to like follow join whatever you call it um, right here in the second of uh, 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 parts here is kind of a summary of what we just did here again these two thumbnails I got to change because they didn't have time quite yet but basically you could ignore the IM context but this shows you how to create a GeoGebra class and some of the updates there and GeoGebra and the Google Classroom will be the very last one. I just have to change URL when this session is finally uh, over because I'm going to have to take off in three minutes. Okay, so these two, uh, I have to change a couple of these URLs, but ignore the IM, ignore the illustrative math context. What you see demonstrated in these quick three minute videos it can be applied to any public GeoGebra resource that you find. Okay, so I will. Um, I guess I'll kind of leave it at that. We have another two minutes for Q&A here. If you want to unmute your mic, feel free. You're very welcome. Um, hope you liked it. Just another quick shout out. If you want to, if you want to explore more with GeoGebra 3D, again, 3D is a spot where students uh, struggle a lot to uh, conceptualize. But um, if you're interested, just a little shout out from three to four today uh, in the Amethyst uh, um, catalog here. We, uh, we're going to actually start exploring the GeoGebra 3D calculator and having kids build in augmented reality, where we can actually take something and, uh, and model it to say, uh, to scale here. I'll just show you a quick example. Again, this is a model that's kind of built already, but when it comes to talking, say, for example, surface area, again, I, uh, let me see here. If you have an iPhone, bring your iPhones, your Androids, your iPads there, you could take uh, any 3D model and you could throw it in the room in which you're actually working on. We'll build a model of, say, a cylinder here, and we'll actually use augmented reality to put it to the test to see if it superimposes or fits on top of it. All right. So again, uh, I know that uh, I just found out that the January regions were canceled, and who knows what what, what the year is is going to bring with respect to June. I have no idea. Uh, we're kind of clueless at the moment, but this could be a great year to actually take the time to learn GeoGebra and its power. Because I can tell you, the GeoGebra graphing calculator is Regents uh, exam compliant. It is. Uh, GeoGebra can't make the statement themselves that, hey, you can use us. Every district in New York has to apply to the Regents Board for permission to use GeoGebra Graphing Calculator. And as long as the district can evidence that we can lock it down securely uh, and meets approval of the Regents Board, um, then, you know, that's totally, uh, totally cool. So Wanaka in Long Island did it um, for a couple of years. And um, it's a great way to help promote equity, uh, you know, among students because you have a great app like GeoGebra Graphing Calculator and, you know, these expensive handhelds get pretty costly pretty quickly. So to help address the equity issue, um, that's an also great uh, solution there as well. You can email me at any time. I give you more information, tim at geogebra.org. Right there. Um, have a great day. Enjoy the conference and uh, hope to see a lot of you back at three if you can make it.